Now we are. How y'all doing? Right. Praise to the Most High. I'm sitting in the room. Bro, yeah. I'm okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm stepping in a minute. But all praise to the Most High. I'm sitting in the room with all the Israelite movement celebrities, man. I've been watching y'all for years, man. For the last nine, ten years, some of y'all is. I came up on y'all teachers, man. It's a blessing to be here. I'm not really an elder of a camp or nothing like that. I'm more like a representative of a population in Israel, about at least 3,000. Population in Egypt, about 100. Population in Uganda, about another 100. And so on and so forth. Um, we scattered, so we're not really uh, under no name or nothing like that at this moment. We're just Israel. We're under Christ. We're under the law, you know, the thing that binds us all. Right, so um, I want to go over uh, Jerusalem. I'm gonna hold up this map if y'all don't mind. It's upside down, too. right? Because most of the people on this planet go to Vatican City to pay homage to the Pope, right? And the other half go to Mecca to pay homage to the Holy Rock, right? Uh, but nobody, nobody comes to Mount Zion to pay homage to the God of Israel. Why is that? Now, today in the land of Israel, sorry, y'all on the, uh, this side, Elder. Um, um, I really need y'all to see this. This is important. Man. This is, this is the, one of the biggest geographical, archaeological finds in the history, and it's happening now, and it ain't no coincidence, right? So, we're looking at the land of Israel, right? Right? Um, of course, the converts, they say that this is Jerusalem, right? Yeah. Right? And this is Jericho. As you see, I got X's on them, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So we all know the story after 70 AD, right? After yeah, yeah. after uh, the, the Romans surrounded Jerusalem and my father's random Messiah, right? It was a great big suicide, right? They was jumping off the cliff and slicing their own throats, right? So... What the Edomites are saying is that the Romans surrounded Jerusalem and all the Israelites magically broke out, ran all the way down here to Masada. And during the siege of Masada, they all killed themselves, right? Mm -hmm. That's the official story. Mm -hmm. But let me ask you a question. Masada, that's an interesting word. Have you ever read a scripture that say anything about a Masada anywhere in the Bible? Mm -hmm. No. Why is that, Elder? Ain't that interesting? So... With that being said, why did they name this place Masada if it doesn't exist in Scripture? It's very important. I want to. Um, I'm gonna go over something with y'all. This is what the whole thing is about. There is a little place, and what they call the Negev, right? When you cross this region, this is Hebron. Mm -hmm. When you cross this region, you enter into the Negev. The Negev is southern Israel, right? And this city right here is called Arad. This is where I was living at, right? And this place is very important. It's right outside of Masada. Interesting, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. <coughs> outside of Masada, there's an ancient site called Tel Arad. Mm -hmm. Tel Arad means ancient Arad, or an ancient Hebrew Thal, right? Thal Arad, right? Mm -hmm. So this is the ancient city of Arad, right? And it's right outside of Masada, where the last siege took place. This is Masada, and we, we know there's no such thing in the Bible as a Masada, right? Masada comes from the Hebrew word Matazada, which means fort, fortress, right? So what they're saying is that Rome surrounded Jerusalem, right? And magically, we escaped and ran all the way down here. This is about a, a week journey on foot. <laughs> nobody got caught, nobody got killed. And we made it all the way to here, surrounded by Romans. Mind you, this is about 100,000 Romans descending on the land, right? Sure. And we made it all the way to Masada where we killed ourselves. Does that make sense? Anybody? No, it don't make it sense. It don't make sense. So, so how do we get in Masada? What I'm going to tell you <laughs> is that this place ain't Jerusalem. It's uh, nowhere near Jerusalem. Wow. And the real Jerusalem is right in this area, this whole circle right here. Is like what we would call today Jerusalem County. You got Bethlehem inside. You got Mount of Olives inside. You got the city of David inside. You got Bethany, Bethphage. All these small cities make up the, the Jerusalem as a whole, right? So, 
right here, this circle is the Mount of Olives, which sits on, which, which where the city of Arad sits, where I'm living, on the east coast of Jerusalem, okay? So we were going over this, um, this, this tabernacle right here, this Israelite temple that they call, and here's the floor plan of it, right? So I'm going to read, we're going to, uh, somebody read Nehemiah for me. You got it again up? Nehemiah. Yeah. They call this place the house of Eliashib because his seal was found in there. You know, back in the ancient days, they had these, these seals where they looked like rings or what they would call, sometimes they call them coins, right? So every time the priest would write letters throughout the land, they had to seal it as in this came from the house of God, right? So Eliashib's house is right there. Somebody, Nehemiah 3 and 1? 3 and 1. Anybody? In the last year, the high priest rose up with his brethren, the priests, okay. and they built it. So this is an account by Nehemiah. He said, Eliashib, the what? The priest. The what priest? The high priest. The high priest. So this guy was in charge of the temple of the Most High, right? The high priest got the charge over all the Levites, over all the uh, services, the incense altar of the, of the Holy of Holies, and all that, right? So what was Nehemiah recording? What was that time frame? Right. The return from Babylon during the Persian kingdom. So Nehemiah was during the time of Ezra, right? So when the Persians released us under, what was it, Darius? Yeah. Yeah, yeah Darius, the, the king who was, uh, I guess you could say, righteous. How do you want to put it? Cyrus. 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 Yeah, Cyrus. He released us, and, and, and we came back and built the tabernacle and re-wall the cities of Jerusalem. We're about to read about that. Jump down to... No, this is not Mount Moriah. Mount Moriah is in this area right here. Oh, okay. It's in this area right here. This is Mount of Olives. Mount Moriah is right here. I can walk from Mount of Olives all the way to Mount Zion and from, Mount, from there to Mount Moriah, from the Mount of Olives. It's all, all this is Jerusalem. All of it. Remember, Jerusalem is surrounded by mountains. It says that in what? Psalms 125, right? First two verses, something like that. Maybe it's Psalms 133. One of them, right? Jerusalem surrounded by mountains. The modern place they call Jerusalem, it ain't a mountain sight. There is no valley of Kidron. There is no valley of Hinnom. It's just, actually, this place. There you go. Appreciate that. Um, this place that they call Jerusalem is actually Bethel, where Solomon was, not Solomon, Samuel, where he was raised as, as a child in the temple of Shiloh, right? So this is an ancient site. It is a temple, but there's no Holy of Holies. Because the Holy of Holies is for what? The priest. The Ark of the Covenant, right? The Ark of the Covenant couldn't have been at the temple of Shiloh because it was in Mount Moriah. But first it was in Mount Zion during the time of David, right? So we're going to read about the rebuilding of the city of David in the book of Nehemiah. Give me verse 15. Now, uh, open that up, that up for me. Go ahead, uh, Nehemiah 3 and 15. We're going to read about the city of David that Nehemiah was recording. Nehemiah the governor, right? <coughs> what? what? I the gate of the fountain repaired. Uh huh. Shalom, the son of Kohasa. At the gate of the fountain. Right? This would be the eastern gate today. This is the gate of Benjamin right here. We call this the eastern gate. Go ahead. The ruler of the part of Mitzvah. Right. He built it and covered it. Uh-huh. And set up the doors thereof. Right. The locks thereof. Go ahead. And the bars thereof. Right. And the wall of the pool of Siloah. The wall of the pool of what? Siloah. Siloah. The pool of Siloah <coughs> is right here on the map. You hold it up. See the number seven? This is the pool of Siloh. The archaeologist is calling it a well, but it ain't a well. It's a pool. This is the pool where you get the old Negro spiritual, uh, wait in the water, right? This pool got healing properties. During the feast, this is where the people would gather, and the angel would trouble the water. This first person to jump in, boom, right? This is where the, the sick people came, right through the gates of Benjamin. First thing you run into, pool of Siloh. Read on. By the king's guard. By the king's guard. All this will be the king's guard. Right? Go ahead. And unto the stairs that go down from the city of David. The stairs that go down from where? The city of David. I thought this was a Canaanite city. 
city of David. The city of David, right? So here's the stairs that go down Mount Zion into the city of David. Read on. After repaired Nehemiah, the son of Azabah, uh -huh. the ruler of the half part of Belzor, right, unto the place over against the sepulchres of David. Over against the place of what? Sepulchres of David. So they repair all the way from the king's garden, all the way up the stairs that go from the city of David to the sepulchres of David, which will be right here in this area uh, against the tabernacle. So what is that saying? You go to modern Jerusalem. Modern Jerusalem, they got a place called uh, the tomb of, what do you call it? Malek da Dawi, right? Not Malak Dawid, right? They say that's King David's tomb. But that's false. King David was buried in the city of David, right next to the tabernacle. Read on. And to the pool that was made, right. and unto the house of the, of the mighty. Uh huh. The house of the what? The mighty. The house of the mighty. That's the house of God. So this right up against the house of the mighty or the house of God is what David sepulchre is. You are looking at the house of God. Here's the floor plan. Here's the house. Right? Where are you at? Sixteen. Okay. Jump down to nineteen. And next to him repaired Esau the son of Jeshua. Uh huh. The ruler of Mitzvah. The ruler of what? Mitzvah. Okay. Go ahead. Another piece over against the going up to the armory at the turning of the wall. F against the turning of the wall, right here, is this where the wall turns, boom, go ahead. After him, Baruch, the son of Zabai, uh -huh. earnestly prepares other piece. Right. From the turning of the wall unto the door of the house of Eliezer. The house of who? The house of who? The door of the house of Eliezer, the high priest. Eliashib's house is right here. So he repaired, when, they, when Nehemiah and Ezra repaired the tabernacle, they repaired all the way on this side to what? Whose house? The issue. The the issue. Should. If you look, Elder, I'm going to give this one to you. I only got one copy to give out because I've been giving them out like crazy since I've been in the country. Uh, as you can see, the archaeologists know that we are looking at the city of David. And I got uh, stuff on my mind. I could email y'all as well. But uh, I'm going to leave this one with you, Elder. Uh, where are you at, 20? 20. No, yeah, 21. Okay, from there, go to, go to 2 Chronicles 30, 32. 2 Chronicles 32. And we're going to see some more about this city of David. I'm going to have to use my computer on this one so everybody can see it. This is important. This is the biggest archaeological find in 2,000 years. What happened? Uh, just hold it for a second. Uh, what happened was 135 AD, Roman Emperor Hadrian scattered the Jews. You heard about that, right, brother? He scattered us from Jerusalem, pushed all of us into what we call Galilee or the north, northern area, right? And he said, anybody come down to this place, Jerusalem, it's going to be killed, right? Because anybody circumcised, doing all this, you're going to be killed. Right. So Hadrian moved us away 135 AD. We ain't been back to Jerusalem ever since, ever since 70 AD. We know that. Everybody know that. Constantine, well, first Roman Emperor Hadrian, uh, he not only moved us north, but he named today Bethel, or Shiloh, he named that Jerusalem, right? No, no, excuse me. He named this Alien Capitolia, Roman Emperor Hadrian, 135 AD, during the time of Barcova, Simon Barcova Revolt, right? So he named Bethel Alien Capitolia. That's just some Roman nonsense, right? And then Constantine the First named it Jerusalem, this place that they call Jerusalem today. So the real Jerusalem is right down in this area. This circle is the center of Jerusalem. Really, it's in the north. This is Mount Ephraim right here. So this is in the north of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Mount Zion, and the sides of the north of Jerusalem. Somebody get in there. We are, I'm showing you the floor plan right here of the tabernacle. This is what uh, the archaeologists got from the ruins and remains. I'm going to show you in a minute why they named it the Canaanite city. Who got chronicles from Yeah. Read Verse that. 2, right? 2 Chronicles 30 and 2. Uh-huh. Go ahead. 
Second Chronicles chapter 30, verse 2. 32, excuse me, in verse 30. Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles. We're going to the time of Hezekiah, Isaiah. Right? Second Chronicles 32 and 30. Uh-huh. This same Hezekiah All right. also stopped the upper water course of Gihon. Of Gihon. So Hezekiah stopped the water course that used to go out and water Jerusalem. Right? He stopped it. What did he do? Go ahead. And brought it straight down to the west side of the city of David. So King Hezekiah stopped the water from watering Jerusalem and brought it to the west side to water the city of David. Here's the tabernacle. Here's Jerusalem. And here's the city of David. So he made the water come out to water only the city of David. And there it is right there. Those are Hezekiah's tunnels right there. Excuse me. On the west side, as you can see, it's all set up. Right? It's, here's the east, west, north, and south. Right? There it is. There's the, the last one right there. Okay? Um, one more thing. Masada. That's what I wanted to go over. Why did your big brother, the white man, Esau, name that place Masada? Because that place is Jericho. Joshua led the Israelites across the Jordan. You will never see this map, believe me. They don't, they don't let you know that this is a river right here. This is the Jordan River right in between the upper Dead Sea and the lower Dead Sea. When Joshua led us across, we conquered Jericho first, came right into Jerusalem, right here. So we were in Jerusalem in 70 AD. The Romans surrounded it. We escaped, went to Jericho, or what the white man called Masada. Right? See that? He said, hold it up high. Kind of short, bro. Uh, <laughs> uh, as you can see, here is Jerusalem. Here's the east border, and this is in the size of the north. Boom. Right? And the waters is going to gush out of the temple. On the east side of the temple, towards the Dead Sea. The other half towards the Ubmo Sea, which is the Mediterranean, right? And the waters is gonna go straight to En Gedi. I got it circled. But today they call it that En Gedi, which is completely false, right? And you can read that in Zechariah 14. And uh, somebody give me uh, Zechariah 14 and 4. Forgive me y'all, I, I don't wanna sound doctrinal or nothing like that. Here's the water course on the west side. Here's the east side, here's the west side. So the east. Hezekiah stopped the water from the east side to water in Jerusalem and made the tunnel right here on the west side to water the city of David. But here it is on the bigger map. This is how he made the well to pull the side of the hill. And these waters are still there. I drunk them every day. And they still got healing properties. Many people come to a ride to heal their asthma, heal their cancer. This place is known as the best air, the best water in the world. Literally. You got a question? Yeah, um, is there a part in the city of David where they have like mud? If you have a cut, you put it on it, it disappear? That's in the Dead Sea. That's near the Dead Sea. That's in this area. Where, where, where John the Baptist baptized Christ, this is the wilderness of Judea, around about Jerusalem, like it says in Matthew 3. This is where Christ is baptized, right? Okay, so it goes to the Jerusalem now. Right, it's right here. All this area is where people go to get healed, all of that. Right in this area. No, ain't nobody doing nothing up here. That stuff is a Roman province. This is just billions of dollars worth of tourist money. They can't tell you, but they know that this is nowhere near Jerusalem, but it makes so much money. And, you know, you know how Cadillac is. Because I know black is stored in the year 1997. And he did say that where they say Jerusalem was not. I heard that. And, and he tell us about it. He go there to the mud, mm -hmm. and he have a scar in his hand, and he put the mud on it, warm, mm -hmm. and he disappeared in front of his eyes. Mm -hmm. He stayed with the mm -hmm. United States. And uh, I got a chance to roll with the archaeologists when we were excavating the site. And I'm going to tell you why they call this a Canaanite city. Check this out. This is going to trip you out. They call this a Canaanite city because guess what they found when they unearthed everything, when they dug up everything? Black they found a full civilization of dead black people, artifacts, pottery, everywhere. Mm. So rather than call this place the city of David, yeah. you gotta give a nigga Canaan. He's Canaan, you know what I'm saying? Right. 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 But everything is preserved. Everything, all the stuff is in this being 
being sold on the black market right now. The kings of the graves is just going a little bit more north of Bethlehem where Christ was crucified. It's all, everything is oh, still there. Cool. But nobody's looking there. Oh, Everybody Richard wants to know yeah. here where the Pope is. So, so Benjamin you knows all this here? Benjamin has been told for many, many years. But he refuses to repent. No, he refuses to repent. We've been telling brothers, come to Zion to keep the feast. They all go to Demona, they go to Ashkelon, they go to the Mount Jerusalem. Nobody wants to come to Zion to keep the feast. So how much brothers know about this? I'm gonna tell you. We've been saying it. Uh, one of the elder brothers been saying it for over 15 years. Wow. Mm. And you know, nobody shows up. Why, why is that? Here and there. Why, why is that? Well, this I'm, stuff I'm is attraction. well, they control it. The media, you think the media over here is messed up. The media in Israel. No, I'm talking about the brothers um, out there. Why, Why they don't come? Yeah. Well, first of all, Benamino wrote his own book. He don't go off the scripture. They got their own holy feasts. They got they, they got their own way of, you know. Let them stay away from the They got their own uh, yeah, got their own So we sent to you, my brother, like what they did to your papers, right? Can you? What you mean? Um, they sent it to the water. They took your uh, visa and everything? Oh, okay. Well, well they well, wouldn't well, renew it well, because well, of the war had just jumped off the Gaza. Okay. But I'm, all my stuff is there. I, I gotta go back. I'm going back. So when you plan on going back there? I would say less than a year, if it be as well, you know. Because that's, you know, that's Zion. The most I love the gates of Zion better than all the people of Jacob. Go with the Lord dwells. <laughs> the Lord dwells in Zion. Please, you know. We all, we all believe in the law, right? This is what we stand on. The law still stands, right? With Deuteronomy 16 and 16, said, all males shall appear before me three times a year. They shall not appear what? Empty. We know that, right? We stand for the law. So when you're breaking certain things down, we got to know that it's important that this has been hidden for all these years and it's being revealed today for a reason. There's no coincidence. So I want to make a proposal, if that's all right with you, brother, you elder brothers. 